Hey, story time grown-ups. How are you doing today? We have a pretty fun springy theme for you. Um, we are talking all about rain and shine and in the story time with Miss Jenny, I'm sure you had loads of fun. If you haven't watched that already, come back after. All right, so we have a few ideas of fun things that you can do related to rain and shine. I forgot my little cheat sheet, so let me grab that out. All right, I did find this week was a little heavier on science and art skills, and that happens. Next week will probably be a little heavier on some different skills. Um, so our first idea I had was to make rainbow art with whatever you have in your house. So if you have just sidewalk chalk, go out and make a rainbow on the sidewalk. If you have bingo daubers, you can, I don't know if you know those, they're the, like the dot markers that are real fat, and you can do that and make a rainbow that way. There are printables that you can do with that too if your child likes a little more um, guidance on an activity. There's also, you could do mosaic pieces. You can just draw with marker or chalk or whatever their favorites are. Um, there's something called cloud paint where you mix, I think it's Elmer's glue and shaving cream, but you mix a couple things together to make this re really puffy paint that's super fun to use. Um, so that's always fun with rainbows. My daughter and I, the one that I do my preschool with, um, decided to do a yarn hanging and it is not super fancy and we did not take a lot of time, but it looks fancy and it looks like we had a fancy day together and we did. Um, we talked a little bit about like finding the halfway point on things um, and how to find the halfway point and we worked on our cutting skills and worked on our threading skills a little bit. Um, this is just a straw with a pipe cleaner and then some scrap yarn that we had around the house. Um, so you can do something like that if you're having a fancy day too totally up to you. All right. There are lots of ways to make rainbows. Have fun making it. If you want, you can even try building an arch out of blocks. That's a real tricky engineering skill. The next idea I had is a puddle jump and I forgot to bring in my example, but I have just some pieces of blue paper that I cut out to look like a puddle and then I put an activity on it like jump on one foot and then I drew like a stick figure poorly jumping on one foot. So you can do that type of thing where you set out all your puddles and have them go to the different spots and do the activity that's on them. This also works really well if you do have sidewalk chalk. You can do it outside with some sidewalk chalk um, and get a little bit extra activity out there. You can also go literal puddle jump, super fun. Uh, if we have any rain, this would be a good time to go out and just put on some good boots or go barefoot, depending on what your rules are, um, and explore those puddles a little bit. Lots of fun. If you are exploring real puddles, I would love it if you take out some chalk and draw an outline around the outside of the puddle, and then you can watch them shrink, and then you can talk with your kiddo about the water cycle. And I know that seems like an idea that we probably wouldn't cover with preschoolers, but it's one that we talk about every year in story time um, when we are on this theme. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. <laughs> All right, getting ahead of myself. The next idea I had is doing watercolor artwork where you could just draw on like a coffee filter or something that like maybe a paper towel um, with markers and then use eyedroppers with water in them and just put a little bit of eyedropper around or you can paint with watercolors, that would be fun too. All right, the next idea is a sign catcher artwork. If you have any contact paper in your house, this works really well. If you don't and you just have some like wide packing tape that's clear or something like that that you can stick things onto. Um, we had some randomly sized scraps of contact paper at our house. So my daughter made a very large piece um, and she was inspired, wanted to continue with our rainbow theme that we were doing. So. She made a lovely big rainbow, and when you hold it up to the light and hang it in a window, it's so bright and colorful and very pretty. Um, so I love doing this. This is just tissue paper that she cut up, so we're working really hard on all those cutting skills, which is fantastic. You can also do ripping, um, which works on a different skill. That works on, it's still those building those writing muscles, but it works on this skill instead of the cutting skill. So if yours is struggling with cutting and does not want to do that, 
doing some ripping of tissue paper is a fantastic way to still build those muscles to get them ready for time to write. All right, the next idea I had, we're going back to that water cycle now. Um, I love teaching the kids about the water cycle. And I know it seems like real big and we learn some huge words when we're doing it, but I love to do it because it's something that they can watch happen and they might've had questions about before and we can explain it in a very age appropriate way. So I like to do this experiment where we take a baggie uh, sorry about the brand situation. We take a baggie and we draw on it with Sharpie just for fun. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Um, and then you put a little bit of water in the bottom and I dyed mine blue. So it was a little more obvious what was happening. And then what I'm going to do is hang this in a really sunny window. And especially on a warm day, it's going to work super well. But if you hang it in a sunny window, you'll start to see the water down here reduces a little bit get smaller and then you can explain evaporation because this water seems to disappear a little bit and then up here you start to see condensation so you can talk through those huge words I have all these hand motions we usually do um, that you know when the water gets hot it evaporates and then the clouds or the condensation gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it can't take anymore. And then it rains. And then that water gets hot and it evaporates. And then the clouds get bigger and bigger again. So they can see that we're doing the same motions over and over again. Um, and I, I, if they don't get it right now, that's fine, right? Because we're introducing it at such a young age they'll get it again later, but this will give them some baseline for getting it when it comes around the next time. Um, and some kids do get it the first time, but that's, it d isn't necessary. Uh, but I do love teaching them all those big words. It makes them feel real fancy. And if you haven't heard a three-year-old try to say evaporation and condensation, it's beautiful. Okay. Um, my last idea that I had is a rain sensory bottle where I put in some, you can hear it already, can't you? I put in some cotton balls, uh, some toothpicks. It would be really fun if I had gone ahead and dyed the toothpicks and the rice with a little bit of uh, food dye, but I didn't today. So this is a very uh, pure experiment. So, um, so I have, let's see, cotton balls, toothpicks, rice, and beads. And then when you turn it, it sounds a little bit like rain and you can see how if it was blue it would look a little bit more like rain falling from the clouds um, and I would like to just mention real fast that this was fancy rice I bought for something that I never got around to making so this is expired rice so once if you have rice that goes bad I know that that doesn't happen to too many people uh, but if you have rice that you lost somewhere and it went bad, you can absolutely still use that for science experiments. It's just that once it's past the expiration date, it wouldn't taste as good, I think. So um, I like to use my expired food product for things like dyeing it, experimenting, playing with it as a sensory object. Because I know a lot of people don't want to use food in their play, and I understand that. So... I think that that's all of my ideas for today. There are so many fun ideas around rainbows. Oh, you could talk about how the rainbow is formed. If you have a prism at your house you could play with, that'd be great. I didn't have one, so I didn't do that. Um, but there's all sorts of fun science around rain and sunshine. And you can do a weather tracker at your house because in Ohio, who knows what's going to happen next, right? All right. Well, I hope that you have a lovely rest of your day. I hope that you're enjoying your time together and having fun doing some of these preschool ideas. As always, if you have some ideas um, of objects you'd like me to use or skills you want me to help come up with ideas to build, please feel free to reach out. I am always happy to come up with some things specific um, for you. So I'll see you soon. Bye.